this Board of Education regular meeting of Monday, May 8, 2023. We are live at Queens Crest High School Auditorium. We're live on our Zoom broadcast. Ms. Harrison, please have a roll call. to approve the student's agenda? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Start off with our high school reports. Beginning with Concord High School, Muhammad Uden and Amira Matnagiri. Good evening, board members and Brandywine School District community members. My name is Mira Ratnagiri, the treasurer of Concord High School's Student Council, and I'm accompanied by our secretary, Rashid Patel. Since the last board meeting, Concord has been very involved in raising funds and building community so that we can finish this year strong. Last meeting, our president, Mohammed, and vice president, Tasim, gave a pres presentation on our achievements throughout the year. Today, we will be pleased to inform you of our continued continuing efforts of our students, staff, and community. So our Interact Club held another successful blood drive last week in partnership with the Blood Bank of Delaware, and we had over 40 staff members and student volunteers donating blood. Our Interact Club also sold Be Positive shirts to support the, our community fundraiser tours the organization and spread awareness for this cause. They donated a profit of 200 $5 to the Be Positive organization. In addition to the Interact Club, our Boys and Girls Lacrosse team chose to donate their ticket sales from the Game Against Brandywine to the Be Positive organization. Combining the profits from ticket sales and the 80 plus t shirt sales, our lacrosse teams have raised $1,313 towards fighting childhood cancer. Speaking of fundraising, our fundraising efforts have truly been a community endeavor having our students and staff reach out to their families and friends to help us reach our goal and bring as much awareness as we can towards this organization. We give our special thanks to Charcoal Pit for donating 10% of their revenue from our event on April 13th to Concord High School team in a fundraiser organized by our president, Muhammad. We are also pleased to announce that Charcoal Pit's owner, Louis Capano, was so moved by our school's effort that he offered to personally donate $2,500 to our team as well. The donation from Charcoal Pit fundraiser and Mr. Capano's donation are both currently being processed and will be shown on our BSC Fest website soon. Including those donations, Concord has raised almost $7,000 for the Be Positive organization. On behalf of our Joint Student Council, consisting of all three high schools, our district goal of bringing community together has culminated in an event called BSC Fest held on Saturday, May 13th from 10 to 2 at Brandywine High School. This event will be free of cost to attend. There will be food trucks, field and carnival games ranging from cornhole to bounce houses. There will be a QR code and a link to sign up on the last slide. We invite you all and your families to come out and enjoy a day full of games, and food, and activities. In addition to the fun, we will be having a speaker from the Be Positive organization join us on that day, as well as Be Positive heroes who were able to beat ca cancer through the help of this organization. Before Rashiel continues our updates within Concord and plans for next year, since this will be my last time speaking, I would like to take a moment to thank the district board and community for giving me this opportunity and experience with public speaking. As for my plans for next year, I'm happy to announce I'll be attending the University of Pennsylvania to attend to study mechanical or bioengineering. So 
congratulations to Mira on that amazing achievement. I know you will do great things in life. Before I, to, uh, before I get too emotional about these guys graduating, let's get back to school updates. <laughs> for Teacher Appreciation Week this week, our students have come together to write kind messages for each of their teachers, which are displayed for them to see. Each day, the teachers will be receiving a treat. Today was pretzels provided by the administration team. Tomorrow will be pastries and donuts provided by our Interact Club and food trucks for teachers later in the week. May 1st was the, uh, could we move to the next slide? May 1st was the last day for National Honor Society members to turn in their hours. And we can proudly say that NHS alone has summed up a total of 3,503 hours for this academic year. I want to thank our NHS officers for this year who made it all possible. In the slide from left to right, there are Tasina Khan, Mira Ratnagiri here, uh, Jack Hanlon, Ashiana Patel, Mary O'Toole, and Nicholas Henry. The NHS also had a busy week last week as they held elections for next year's officers and held their induction ceremony in which 69 new members joined the organization. I am also proud to announce that this year, our students have expressed their school spirit at the student-run school store. Our store sold a total of $16,826 of Concord gear this year, which goes to show how effective Concord has been at building a sense of community and belonging. Many more seniors have committed to their colleges, which include prestigious schools such as the University of Virginia, Stanford University, and the University of Michigan. Our seniors are going into a wide variety of majors, ranging from fashion merchandise to intelligence analysis to elementary teacher education. As this is the last board meeting of the year, at least for us, we want to thank the people whose support and guidance were essential to our successes this year. We thank our student council advisors, Ms. Brody and Dr. Royster. Ms. Brody stayed up many nights editing, editing documents at 2 a.m. and juggling so many different roles as a staff member that we've lost count. Dr. Royster, with his oohs and incentive field trips, never let our energy dampen. We also thank our, our principal, Mr. Mayor, who helped support us with school resources whenever we needed them and inspired us to handle our business, as he says. We could not have done any of this without Ms. Davis our Joint Student Council Coordinator, who kept us on track and handled the district side of the business for our three uh, school student councils. Last but not the least, we thank our district board members for giving us the opportunity to respect, represent our school student body and gain valuable leadership experience. Moving forward into next school year, Concord hopes to not only live up to the legacy of this year's student council, but also do even better. While Mira, Tassin, and Muhammad are all graduating this year, I'm running for the president of student council. And if I do get elected, and if I stand at this podium again, I want to talk about even more club involvement, even more community building and community service, about many more academic and athletic achievements, and even district-wide projects like BSD Fest. As we close our last speech of the year, Concord Student Council hopes to amaze you again next year with even more news to update all of you on. Thank you. Also, uh, you can scan that QR code if you wanna sign up to go to BSD Fest. It's uh, Brandywine High School, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. May 13th, this Saturday. Any questions? Uh, I would just like to say um, to the three representatives from Concord this year, thank you so much for the work that you have put in. I do feel like you're somewhat running your election suit campaign campaigning while you're up there, which is phenomenal use of your time. Um, but I also want you guys to know that you really have elevated the board meeting and the professionalism of our students coming to our board meeting. And thank you for taking it seriously and um, just all that you've done and it sounds like you guys are doing great things at Concord and I really like the depth and detail of your presentation so um, thank you for doing that and I hope you get to continue doing that in the future. Thank you for the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And I think the num numbers that you shared were 
way impressive um, in any economic environment, but certainly the one that we're in now, the fundraising dollars that you, you as a group pulled together is, it should be commended. Um, I appreciate that you gave uh, a list of people that you were thanking. Um, I want to add to that list, thank you, the students and student leadership for pushing your peers to be so engaged in the community, um, to do good things and partner with aid organizations and help you find work and everything else that came out of that too. So uh, hats off to you as well. Thank you. Next up, we have Mount Pleasant High School, Joanne Kim and Meng Wong. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Superintendent, Brandywine School District Board members, and members of the Brandywine School District community. My name is Dylan Kim, and I'm the Student Council President of Mount Pleasant High School. Uh, the, the Jared TC VEX Robotics team recently returned from their trip to Dallas, Texas, having competed in the VEX Worlds Championship and the JROTC National Championship. Uh, both K and G teams did an amazing job, with the K team winning the Sportsmanship Award at the JROTC competition. Their sense of professionalism and sportsmanship and competition represents Mount Pleasant High School as competitors of character. And we are very proud to have them bear the title of Green Knight. Uh, the Black Student Union and Girls in Power Clubs hosted their Greek Step Showcase a couple, step, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a cultural event meant to be both educational and engaging. There were various black sororities and food trucks represented at the event. Uh, some of them included Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Delta Sigma Theta, Sigma Gamma Rho, and Omega Psi Phi. Uh, students and staff performed as well, along with a DJ and 50 person drum line as the grand finale. Uh, there was a photo booth as well, which looked stunning. Uh, there were alumni that attended, connecting the tradition throughout the years. And the event had an amazing turnout. We'd like to thank the BSU and Girls in Power for their continued dedication to bringing awareness to the wonders of African American culture uh, to our community. As we wrap up our year, AP and IB tests have been hard on our students. I had mine today. Among these tests during the month of May, there are a lot of end of year celebrations. AVID had a senior celebration last Wednesday. The JROTC program will have its award banquet and senior recognition event tomorrow night. And the music program will have its awards dessert uh, this Wednesday. I wish the be we wish the best of luck to our AP and IB students on their exams. Uh, as always, for the last time this year, the Mount Pleasant High School community would like to thank uh, our principal, Ms. Lacey, our student council advisor, Ms. Herskowitz, uh, Ms. Davis, our joint student council advisor, and for the entire community for giving me, the, me my, uh, myself, and my team to lead these wonderful uh, bright men and women. Uh, it's truly been a pleasure to work with the community this year, and I'm proud of the progress we've all made. Uh, thank you, and we're open to questions at this time. Fantastic report, Dylan, thank you. Um, I know this will be the same for Brandywine as it was for Founded Union. I appreciate the thanks that you give to your uh, student advisors and the building leadership. Uh, I know that you know they're great hands and minds that are guiding you along, but I also wanna thank you all as the students for pushing those administrators and teachers um, with the ideas and the work that you're doing, things that you're bringing forward is, is really pushing us to, to keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Brandywine's High School, Evan Gant. Uh, good evening, board members and BSD community. My name is Evan Gant, and I am Brandywine High School Student Council President, and I am here to provide Brandywine High School student report for May. Uh, with spring sports season ending soon, I felt that it'd be uh, appropriate to start off with a uh, summary 
of how our spring sports are doing. So with baseball, it is ending on the 20th with their next game on the 11th against Newark High School and a current record of five and eight. Uh, golf is ending on the 16th, but they're gonna be making it to championships that extend onto the 23rd. Their next game is on the 9th against William Penn with a current record of six and seven. Boys lacrosse is ending on the 19th with their next game on the 9th, which is their senior night uh, against AI DuPont with a current record of two and seven. Girls lacrosse is ending on the 10th with a final game against Christiana, a current record of six and seven. Girls lacrosse is ending on the 15th, their next game on the 10th against Tattnall and a current record of 10 and two, which is very impressive. Softball is ending on the 17th with their next game on the 10th against Del Castle with a current record of six and seven. Boys tennis is ending on the 16th with their next game on the 10th against Archmere uh, and their current record being six and three. Girls tennis is ending on the 16th with their next game on the 11th against St. Mark's with a current record of six and four. Track and field ended on April 25th with a record of six and two and they're gonna be continuing through the championships until May 20th. And then lastly, boys volleyball ended on the 5th with a, with a record of five and 10 and we wanna thank and show appreciation for all the students participating in the sports at Brandywine. Uh, next we have, which will be uh, acknowledged later on, Brandywine's engineering teams were recognized as a national finalist by Samsung Sol for tomorrow competition, um, which is a very big thing. I think that I just wanted to acknowledge the kind of thing that they did, it's really impressive. Um, Brandywine's promise coming up uh, Brandywine is receiving donations and asking for volunteers for the production of 2023's After Prom, which is occurring that and the prom on May 27th. Uh, Brandywine just finished up their most recent targeted freshman honorary ceremony, which is meant to reward freshmen for good grades, good athletics, good behavior, and it allowed for over 100 freshmen to be acknowledged with rewards and certificates at these events. Um, Brandywine Spring Fling and Spirit Week has recently con uh, concluded with another successful pep rally, which is the third for the year, and a successful dance on Saturday night. And we want to give props to the Brandywine's class of 2025 for bringing it all together and organizing the turnout. Um, the leaders of the pack at Brandywine is wrapping up their year's work with concluding the um, final touches for the committees of school spirit, school slogan, and community service and they're gonna be tying up recommendations going into the next year to allow it to be a smooth transition. And then final promotion, since this is district work, uh, the BSD Fest is occurring on May 13th, 10 to two, a uh, fundraiser for a Be Positive organization, and we hope all of you can attend and come. And then lastly, since it's fitting, we wanted to thank Ms. Reggio, as well as everyone involved in student council, the class offices and the committees that allow for all the individuals who desire to make Brandywine a better place become a thing. And we found it fitting at the last board meeting to be the time to show recognition. Um, that's all, so I'm open for questions. Um, Abby, two questions. My first is, what are Brandywine's plans to increase that donation from to compete with Concord, do you, like, do you know any plans in the works to get that noticed out? Uh, with the time frame, unfortunately, there isn't much that we can do in terms of making a massive jump, but we hope to increase the amount of promotion that we have for the um, event to allow more people to still be involved to some extent with the BSD Fest and to be just spreading awareness for the organization as well. So even if our donation amount isn't as much as Concord's extremely impressive <laughs> height, we still want to be able to allow for some kind of impact to be made by a brand new one. So will will the any will there be any money raised the day of the event? Uh, that's undecided from my understanding. There is? Oh, okay, there is. I'm sorry if you mentioned this, but did you tell us that if you have plans after high school? Oh yeah, I will be attending University of Delaware to study exercise science. Congratulations. Thank you. One last comment, one last comment. Um, I'm looking forward to Brandywine Fest as well. And um, not to show any bias because it's all going to the same cause, but I think the Brandywine High School class of 92 has <laughs> a couple dollars left in their account that really? we would be uh, looking to donate to the cause. I'll catch up with you sometime this week, if not at the fest. Yeah, we love to take what you have, yeah. <laughs>
you have you and have I'm, two members of the class of 92 on the board yes so. and i'm not sure anyone's noticed throughout you know this is a really special group of student leaders and watching the exchanges between the schools of handshakes and pats on the back and just the level of collaboration and cooperation and support they've given each other is pretty pretty impressive so congratulations thank you And that will lead us to high school reporter special recognition uh, presented by Dr. Kutch and Mr. Rivera. Members of the board, Superintendent Haller. How impressive for our high school reporters this year. Our board reporters took the time each month to solicit student voice and share the student's impact on our community. They organized information from clubs, organizations, athletics, and then presented it publicly in a very professional manner and with personality sometimes. It was evident that they took their responsibility very seriously. To our student reporters, I know this for sure. Each of you strengthened our community by presenting the impact of student voice and the power of student leadership. You also assisted our district leadership team in making more informed decisions to improve the education and the experience of all students in BSD. And finally, you, represented, you represent the best of what it means to be a Bernie Mine Bulldog, Conquer Raider, Raider, and a Mount Pleasant Knight. Since this is the last board meeting of the school year for student presentations, I ask for all the student reporters to come back onto stage at this time. I'm going to read the names of any of the reporters who had presented throughout the year. They may or may not be here tonight. From Bernie Wine High School, we want to recognize Evan Gant, Bobby Bear, and Grace Towler. From Concord High School, we have Mira Ratan Gary, Rashil Patel, Mohammed Uden and Tasina Khan, and from Mount Pleasant High School, Dylan Kim and Mae Wang. Collectively, you have set the bar high for next year's reporters. We hope that this experience helped build your own confidence and leadership skills. We wish the seniors continued success in college next year job very well done it says certificate of special recognition and that has the student's name is awarded for this certificate of special recognition for being in this case Bernie Wine high schools school board reporter for the 2023 school year and then it's signed by our superintendent and board president. Congratulations. Well, the Business Professionals of America, known as BPA, is a career and technical student organization that develops and empowers student leaders to discover their passion and change the world by creating unmatched opportunities in learning, professional growth, and service. We would like to congratulate tonight P.S. DuPont Middle School's Business Professionals of America chapter on their winning achievements at the 2023 BPA National National Leadership Conference in Anaheim, California. Wow. This occurred from April 26th to April 30th, and historic 6,500 students competed at this event, 
which consisted of 25 states and Puerto Rico, as well as an international presence from China, Haiti, and Peru. All seven members of the PS DuPont chapter ranked in the top 10 of one or more of the competitive events nationally. Yeah, how about that? As a result, they walked across the national stage in front of a live audience while being live streamed nationally and internationally to proudly receive their medals. And I know I saw a bunch tonight and they brought them with them. So I love all that bling. Could Heidi Corbin and Megan Davis please come to the stage and help us present some certificates? These two fine ladies traveled across the country with their team. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, and I saw uh, Dr. Tag Tartaglione in the audience tonight. Why don't you come up too? That would be fantastic. Okay, now I'll be announcing the students one by one. What we would like for you to do is just come across the stage. We'll hand you a certificate and we'll be able to get a nice picture. Our eighth grade students, Rajat Bhaskaran, who was president this year, come on up. I know, be careful, don't hit anybody in the head with those medals, my goodness. Manav Suresh, who was vice president this year. <laughs> that clang clang. Megan Lee, secretary. Nikita Iyer, treasurer. Aisha Adelaide, parliamentarian. <laughs> Abigail Wang, and our seventh grader, Sai Durasala. Let's give these students a nice round of applause for representing us on the national stage. Thank you, Dr. Kutch. Thank you, Dr. Taglion. Thank you, parents. Thank you, any staff members that are watching this because we couldn't have done it without all of you. Mm -hmm. And we really thank you. Thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. Okay, at this time, could Dr. Wagner please come to the stage? Each year, the Delaware Advisory Council on Career and Technical Education recognizes individuals who have made outstanding contributions to career and technical education, otherwise known as CTE. Last week, Dr. Judd Wagner was recognized as one of those individuals for the entire state of Delaware. Here are some of the words they used to describe Dr. Wagner. 
Dr. Judd Wagner is an exceptional educator who has dedicated himself to empowering his students and fellow teachers in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As a career in technical education and science CTE presidential award-winning teacher, he has worked tirelessly to inspire his students to pursue, to pursue careers in STEM and equip them with the knowledge and skills needed to succeed in the workforce. His passion for teaching and his subject matter is evident in the outstanding results achieved by his students. We'll hear a little bit more later tonight. Many of whom have gone on to pursue successful careers in STEM related fields. He actively contributes not only to his building, but throughout his district and the state, leading initiatives such as K-12 STEM programming, physics curriculum writing, and CTE planning, making him a beloved and respected member of the education community. On behalf of the board, Judd, congratulations. Well done. This is a big deal. Brandywine High School named national finalists in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow STEM competition. So you've heard the word. We've shared and spread this word. Many of you have been voting online. Thank you so much. As you most know that they, the Brandywine High School engineering team has been named as one of 10 national finalists in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow STEM competition. As part of their application process, they had to submit a video. They designed it, they wrote it, all their ideas. We would like to share with you their video they created that captures all that they were able to do. So at this time, we'd like to play the video. Thank you. 
This is an incredible honor and accomplishment, and no matter which team is chosen as number one, this team will always be number one to us. Please join us on the stage, Thomas Fair, Noah Fake, Anand Jun, Arun Krish Krishnamurti, and Gabriel Poost. Now, next week, these gentlemen will be traveling to Washington, D.C. for the last part of the competition in which they will find themselves on stage making a pitch around their product. We thought it would be a great idea to provide them an opportunity to make a pitch now to you all, to the board, for your feedback before they're off and running in Washington. So at this time, I give it over to our Brandywine team. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Noah Fake. My name's Anand John. My name's Thomas Bear. I'm Arun Krishnamurti. And I'm Gabriel Poost. And we are the Brandywine High School Samsung Salt for Tomorrow team. First, we would like to give a big thanks to Dr. Michelle Kutch for arranging for the opportunity for us to present tonight. And we'd also like to give a big shout out to the talented Nick Austin for all of her wonderful work behind the scenes. So we've all been in school together for 12 years, and we came up throughout the same Brandywine School District programs. We all started together in kindergarten at Mount Pleasant Elementary School in the gifted program. And we continued with that program at Claymont Elementary School and P.S. DuPont Middle School. And finally, this culminated in us completing our four years here at Brandywine High School, three of which included the design and engineering pathway. So we've all been participants in this tightly woven learning community for two thirds of our lives. So this is where we came from and this is where we're going. Noah is committed to the University of Maryland to study physics. Anand John is attending MIT for electrical engineering and computer science. Thomas is attending the University of Delaware to study mechanical engineering. Arun is attending the University of Pittsburgh to study civil engineering. And I'm attending the Stevens Institute of Technology to study environmental engineering. So we would like to start by taking a trip to the John G. Leach School in the Colonial School District, which inspired us to change some lives. Let's take a look. This is Frank Hughes. Frank specializes in adaptive physical education, and he's constantly finding ways to engage his students through allowing them to play sports. Let's take a look at what Mei Ling is doing. Mei Ling is playing baseball. As you can see, she's reaching for an assistive button. Low cost buttons like these can be as complicated as a puff and sip switch or really as simple as connecting two pieces of aluminum foil. Her assistive button is connected to an interface box, which can also be connected to an appliance. The appliance that she is currently manipulating is a corded leaf blower 
when she manipulates the leaf blower, it propels a baseball to simulate Mei Ling hitting a ball in the sport. It is also worth noting, it is also worth noting that there is a duplicate system and quite a few of them around the room to boot that provides the same function as Mei Ling's system and allows Mr. Hughes to include all his students in concurrent participation without having to take down setups like Mei Ling's right here. So let's take a look at how this core device works here. It can plug into a wall, which is how it gets power from any ordinary outlet. And it has switches that allow the user to control the function and the duration that it's on for. There's also outlets, which allow you to plug in any common household device. And an aux jack, which allows you to connect a button like the one Mei Ling was using, which, and these buttons are adapted for people with all levels of mobility. This is a great product. However, it costs $300. Mr. Hughes's program is well funded, so he's able to provide these for all the students in his classroom, but when they go home, it's a different story. This cost barrier makes it very difficult to do these same tasks they do in school when they're at home. Last academic year, we were inspired by the work of Mr. Hughes and other educators who pushed the limits of assistive technology to create affordable alternatives to this product. And we tested them in real world environments. But the problem that we failed to recognize at the time was it wasn't the high cost of multiple um, devices. Rather, it was the practicality of actually manufacturing our devices on such a large scale that it would actually meet the demand realistically. To illustrate this point further, let's do some quick back of the napkin figures. So using, using uh, the Brandywine School District as a guide, uh, to meet the demands of every student with a disability within the school district, we would need to produce about 1,000 units. Our designs from last year would have taken maybe a week to make one. To make one of these would have taken about a week. Um, this year, this is our short-term short goal. So the Brandywine School District makes up about 1 14th of the population of all K-12 students in the state. So in order to meet the needs of every single student with a disability in the state, we would have had to make 10,000 units, which is our long-term goal. However, we're not limiting ourselves to just these two goals. When we were presenting our project at the University of Delaware last fall, we were able to meet a variety of new people. One of those people was Diane Massey, who is the Director of Outreach and Engagement at Kendall Corporation, which is a corporation that runs senior living facilities. She helped us realize that our project could have an impact well beyond what we originally thought. As she told us, we may age and we all may age into some kind of disability. So products like ours are needed so that we can still maintain our healthy, active, and engaging lifestyles. With this in mind, we realized that our target population was the 6.4% of Delawareans, uh, adults with independent living disabilities, which brings us to our stretch goal of 360,000 units. So with this in mind, we had to go right back to the drawing board where we had to solve this issue of scale. So to begin with, we um, chose to change our design so we only use very commonly used electronics to further decrease the cost of our product. And we also designed a printed circuit board. So not only did this decrease the footprint of our product, it also increased its manufacturability. This is as we could now tap into the highly efficient world of PCB manufacturing, and so we could now uh, create a high volumes of PCBs for a very low cost, like so. And, so. and with that in mind, we now needed to create a robust enclosure for our device, but we needed the material we used to be sustainable and plentiful. 
So for that, we turn to uh, leftover PVC. So over 7 billion pounds of PVC are discarded every year. And so by upcycling this waste, we're hoping to decrease its impact on the environment. To help us achieve our goal of 10,000 units and eventually 360,000 units, we created a partnership with the Site Program, an established manufacturing program within our school district that helps 18 to 22-year-olds 20, with student with special needs um, gain skills and competence. Our partnership with Site will assist us with assembly, packaging, and distribution. Our AACU is a seamless substitute for the interface box. So individuals and classrooms that already have one will not have to make any accommodations to replace it with our AACU. Our transition to mass manufacturable products allows us to produce them with, for less than $20, a 93% reduction in the current market products. Secondly, our transition away from soldering, 3D printing, and coating allows an easier assembly. Thank you for letting us share our story and help kids like JoJo make more of her movies. favorite shark tank is one of my absolute favorite shows and I think you guys would rock it if you were to appear on it. Thank you. Congratulations on a phenomenal product and um, I look forward to seeing you guys this week. Thank you. Fantastic presentation. Very poised, polished. You guys have it down pat. You know, fantastic work that you're doing and you know, touching on all the boxes, cost, environmental, Helping, you know, in order to change the world, you gotta you know, change your community. Bringing in the local resources and groups to help is fantastic. Stuff to be proud of. Thank you. May I, may I also just say um, thank you so much to the board and or to the school district administration. And not so long ago, um, these pathways were created, and I know that there was a lot that went into the planning of the pathways and to make sure that they were meaningful pathways for our students. And so um, thank you to the district administration and to Michelle and to everybody else that's been involved to um, see the vision of these pathways so that the students could have these opportunities. Because as you can clearly see, the development of the pathway led to them being able to use the building blocks to get to this point. So to that we wouldn't have been able to get to this point, obviously, without the three years as instructor, probably plus even a fourth year in um, Dr. Rogers' classroom, I believe. Right? So. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say excellent presentation. Um, thank you also just for um, acknowledging um, the history of, of what you're doing. You know, this is starting in kindergarten at Mount Pleasant. Um, CSD is not in a course um, at Van Luy High. Um, thank you so much for representing both the district as well as, you know, the state of Delaware. You guys have done such a, such a wonderful job, and I know that your families and your teachers and your friends are, are very proud. Uh, we certainly are very proud of you, too. And, of course, this doesn't happen um, without uh, somebody like Dr. Wagner. And, Dr. Wagner, you illustrate when you do what good teachers do. You teach you set the standards, and then you get out there. So <laughs> thank you so much. As evidence that you are letting them do the presentation and letting them take over. So thank you so much. Mr. Scrumut, if I could add, uh, earlier this evening, we had the opportunity to thank uh, retirees that have given a life of service, and, and during that event, I used the following quote from Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Somewhere along the way, we must learn 
that there is nothing greater than to do something for others. How that saying resonates with the mindset, the self, the serving of others versus self mentality of these young men in this congregation. We learn, somewhere along the way, we learn, the five of you have taught everyone in this audience a valuable lesson. Thank you for thinking of others in terms of your talents, gifts, or insights. Just want to say thank you again, Dr. Wagner. Thank you again, team. Good luck to all of you in Washington, D.C. next week. We are rooting for you. Good evening, Mr. Scrobot, uh, President of our board, Susan Heller, Vice President, all of our awesome board members, Superintendent Holler, and all of our guests remaining in the audience and online. It is my distinct privilege to celebrate one more group this evening, and they are a group of staff members uh, in the Brandywine School District that just do outstanding things in a myriad of ways. I'm going to invite some principals up to share briefly some of the highlights of what they have done in their respective roles and contributions. I'd like to start with Mr. Matt Auerbach, principal of Mount Pleasant Elementary School. And would you please help me also to welcome Suzanne Banker. She is the elementary teacher of the year for Mount Pleasant Elementary School. Let me first start off by saying happy Teacher Appreciation Week to all of our phenomenal teachers in the Brandywine School District. Super, super excited to celebrate Teacher Appreciation Week at Mount Pleasant Elementary and I know throughout the district. Greetings, Board of Education, Superintendent Holler, parents, students, and other esteemed guests. My name is Matthew Auerbach and I am the principal of Mount Pleasant Elementary School. I have the honor tonight of publicly naming Mount Pleasant Elementary's 2023 recipients of our teaching award winners. First, Ms. Jessica Smith was the recipient of our Educator Support Professional Award. Jessica works in Mount Pleasant's Emotional Support Program, and she has done so for nearly five years. She works diligently daily to change the trajectory of the lives of the students she works with. Unfortunately, Jess could not be here tonight, but I wanted to at least recognize her for the hard work that she puts into her job each and every day. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Next, we have Ms. Denise Buffin, who is the recipient of MPE's Behavioral Health Professional of the Year Award. Ms. Buffin is also unable to attend this evening's event, but again, I felt the need to let everybody know how impactful Nurse Buffin is. Simply put, she is our rock. She is the calm in the middle of the storm and she keeps us all safe. Us, meaning teachers too, <laughs> not just the kids. 
We love you, Nurse Button. And happy birthday and happy Nurses Appreciation Day, too. Finally, we have the great honor, I have the great honor of introducing to you Mount Pleasant Elementary's Teacher of the Year, Miss Susie Banker. <laughs> I've had the privilege of working with Ms. Banker for nearly 10 years now at Mount Pleasant Elementary. And I can honestly say that Ms. Banker is one of the hardest working, most caring, humble, organized, and respected teachers that I've ever worked with. Ms. Banker left the profession of teaching uh, many years ago after having her own children, but came back to fulfill her calling, and I'm so glad that she did. She is a mentor to novice teachers and a calm presence in our kindergarten wing, which can get a little rowdy at times. <laughs> Excuse me. Her passion for doing what's best for kids is palpable. She passionately, yes, respectfully voices her concerns around children during PLCs and other professional meetings and has been a major force in bringing back structured play for kindergarten students which has now become a district-wide initiative. Mrs. Banker has filled the voids that were created by a few other iconic MPE teachers and has taken on these additional tasks with great care and professionalism. One of my favorite people to talk to during kindergarten recess to hear about what's cooking in the Banker household this weekend, I am so proud to introduce to you once again Mount Pleasant Elementary's 2023 Teacher of the Year, Miss Susie Banker. And Next, I would like to invite to join me on the stage, Principal Heather Austin from our site program. And this evening, Ms. Austin is going to be celebrating Darlene Fuckman, their emotional support, I'm sorry, educational support professional of the year. And they are about to join us now. Please congratulate them. Good evening. Um, again, I'm Heather Austin, a proud principal of our site program here in the Brandywine School District. Um, I wanted to take one minute, Hakima, I promised you, um, to uh, introduce Darlene Fuckman, who is our Educator Support Personnel of the Year. She is one of our paraeducators at the site program. I'm honored to be given the opportunity to honor Ms. Darlene Fruckman as our Site Support Professional of the Year. This recognition is not only a testament to her hard work and dedication, but also to the impact that she has had on the interns, faculty, and the community. Darlene is an exemplary role model and mentor who has gone above and beyond to ensure that interns are given the best experience possible. Not only has she dedicated countless hours to our site interns, she also serves as a certified RBT, which she took that initiative to become certified on her own, assistant softball coach at Mount Pleasant High School, our site equity champion, and also the coach of our unified basketball team. We are incredibly fortunate to have such an amazing para in our program. Let us celebrate her accomplishments and recognize her for the impact she has had on our program. It is only with people like Darlene that we can make sure that our interns have access to the highest quality of education. Congratulations to Ms. Darlene, our Para-Educator of the Year. And we have one additional presentation this evening, and that's from the Forwood Elementary School. And I would like to invite Principal Diana Golden, and I believe I saw, yes, Assistant Principal Angela Williams to join me on the stage. And they have two people that they are acknowledging this evening. 
The first is their um, elementary teacher of the year, Miss Jennifer. I may chop this up a little bit. I apologize. Michaelwitz. Thank you. Good evening. I am proud to present Ford Elementary's Teacher of the Year and my mentor 18 years ago, Dr. Jennifer Michaelwitz. Jen has served many positions in BSD over the past 23 years. She might have more certifications than I have fingers to count on, which shows Jen is the true image of a lifelong learner. Dr. Michaelwitz is well respected for her curricula knowledge teaching instruction, and use of classroom management strategies. Jen is innovative, reflective, and task-oriented. She supports the growth of our school as first grade team leader and lead of our equity team. Not only does she have high expectations for herself, but she holds high expectations for each student in her diverse classroom. She creates a positive, inclusive learning community where she supports and challenges each student every single day. As a first grade teacher and one who teaches children to learn to read, Jen takes the success of each of her students personally. I'll never forget Jen's words. My students will grow and achieve because of who they are and what they want to be matters most. I will not be the reason that one of them cannot read leaving first grade, which could impact their future to become a doctor a teacher, or anything they dream to be. This statement exemplifies Jen's passion and dedication to see each of her students succeed. Forward is extremely thankful to have, have Dr. Jen Michaelwitz as a teacher and a teacher leader who truly puts students' learning above all else. Jen, we thank you for your passion and dedication. I am pleased to honor Ms. Kenya Brown as Ford Elementary's Educator Support Professional of the Year. Ms. Brown deserves this recognition as she truly cares about Ford staff, students, and family. She has been a custodian in BSD for over 17 years, and almost nine of those have been at Ford. As a colleague shared, Kenya enhances the learning environment through her attention to detail caring enough to do the small things well that may even be overlooked. Kenya does whatever needs to be done as she treats our school as if it were her own home and goes above and beyond without even being asked. Kenya is well respected and valued by her colleagues. In addition to her responsibilities, Ms. Brown creates meaningful relationships with students and staff members. She greets everyone with a smile and warm welcome. Her relationships with staff and her knowledge of our students are be a benefit to our forward community. Kenya's infectious laugh can lift spirits and inspire smiles. We are so fortunate to have such a caring, dedicated colleague as Ms. Kenya Brown. She is an asset to our custodial team as well as our school staff. Kenya, you go above and beyond to ensure our building is a welcoming, clean, and safe environment for our students, staff, and families, and we thank you. into the superintendent's report. Mr. Holt. Our last board meeting took place only a few weeks ago, but there's plenty of amazing student and staff accomplishments and information to share this evening. 
On April 24th, Secretary Holodick, Governor Carney, Senator Carper honored 92 of the state's most distinguished seniors at the annual Secretary of Education Scholars Dinner. The scholars were joined by their families and their principals. The Secretary of Education Scholars selections are based on both academic record and community service. Congratulations to the winners from Brandywine High School who saw both uh, Armand and John uh, earlier and Jonathan P. K. I'm sorry. From Concord High School, Miles Bly and Mira Ratnagari. And from Mount Pleasant High School, Eleanor Frank and Zakaya Zara. Congratulations to these amazing students, and we wish each of you continued success next year in college. I know we just recognized our Samsung National Finalist team, but I couldn't imagine giving my report without out again drawing attention to a top 10 finish in the nation in a very prestigious competition. Please know that regardless of outcomes in the finals, this team, you, have scored an impressive victory, not only for Brandywine High School and the Brandywine School District, but for all of Delaware with your ingenuity and creativity in the service of others. Again, congratulations. So where does such a passion for design and engineering begin? It begins with outstanding educators that seek opportunities to focus on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in the earliest years of education. So let me correct that in honor of a late board member, Mr. Joe Brumskill. Mr. Brumskill was emphatic that STEM be replaced with STEAM science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. BSD programming focuses on incorporating STEAM-related concepts and experimentation into cross-curricular content. The engagement and wonderment as seen in these photos are the foundational elements that lead to the accomplishments that we just celebrated with our Brandywine High School Samsung Solve for Tomorrow team. Speaking of the arts, we did it. The Brandywine School District has been honored with the Best Communities for Music Education Award for the fifth consecutive year. Thousands of schools and school districts go through the evaluation process each year in the hopes of being selected as community for music education. Congratulations to our amazing vocal, instrumental, and string students and staff on this impressive achievement. A special shout out to Dr. Dominic Pisano, who oversees the arts for the district. And I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge our parents and the community for their continued support for the arts in the Brandywine School District. Quick fact from the recent Young Brandywine Artist Exhibit at the Blue Ball Barn. Over 2,500 in-person visitors toured the gallery of student artwork during the event. Who knows how many took advantage of the virtual gallery tour that was online. In addition, around the arts, Concord High School student Mazen Backham received gold nationally for his photograph and will be honored in New York City in June at Carnegie Hall. Tally Middle School art students will have their artwork in a special exhibit at the Biggs Museum of Art on Sunday, May 7th from 5 to 7 p.m. Without question, the arts are alive and well in our schools. The award-winning programming is the perfect segue into our next slide. partnership between Delaware Technical Community College and several schools, including 
all three BSD high schools, was awarded the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce Superstars in Education Award. BSD students currently in the Patient Care Technician CTE Pathway were recently filmed at Dell Tech in Wilmington for a video commemorating the award. Superstars in Education ceremony in which this award will be officially announced is actually taking place at this very moment. We were able to get a copy of the video being shown at that event. Let's take a look. Delaware Tech's a great fit for the patient care program for many reasons. First, a lot of cases our students do want to go to college, so they, they come out of high school and want to go into our nursing program or one of our allied health programs. This gives them an opportunity to work in a field while they're earning their college degree. During the pandemic, we were in crucial need of staffing. People were burned out, we were short staffed. The students from this program stepped up. We were able to onboard uh, several of them very quickly, get them on the floor, on the unit, trained and working. We were extremely moved by what the CNAs were able to do to alleviate the nurses and doctors from the daily duties that they weren't able to do. I would say about halfway into the program, we kind of integrate the skills portion um, to where they go in the lab and they do a lot of hands-on. They, they do a lot with the mannequins and then they also play the, the patient. And seeing them go from very timid and shy and afraid to just soaring is, is the best feeling in the world. I think I'm a senior in high school, so I am getting a lot of skills and hands-on that I would not get just in my normal school, and it will provide me a very good like background for my future in nursing. These students coming up, they care, they really do, and they, they go above and beyond to help, and that's what we need. We need a lot more of that. There is a very large need for CNAs at Christiana Care and in healthcare overall. We have probably about 100 openings at this time. I think the patient care program is having a great impact on the local workforce. As students graduate, and our first cohort we had statewide 45 students, well, we're over 140 students now. So just think sheer numbers, how many students are going into the workforce upon graduation, even if it's part-time, the impact that can have on long-term care facilities and, and the hospitals settings up and down the state. Speaking of superstars, last meeting we congratulated Mount Pleasant High School's JROTC Robotics Program for having two teams qualify for the VEX Robotics National Championships in Dallas, Texas. You heard earlier student cadets from both Mount Pleasant High's teams, Team 890G and 890K, made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the national competition. In addition to excelling in the actual competition, Team 8903K won the 2023 National Sportsmanship Championship Award at the national competitions. Congratulations to our cadets and to Colonel Montanez for their outstanding accomplishments. I would also like to take time to congratulate the BSD students that participate in the Brandywine Box Robotics Program. Board member Jason Heller is one of the co-founders of the group that is primarily comprised of BSD students. This year, five Brandywine Box teams and the two MPHS JROTC teams all qualified for the VEX Robotics World Championships. How amazing is that statistic? Only 5% of the 
next teams in the world ever make it to the world championship. This is the third time that the Brandywine Box has had teams competing, and the second year for NPHS and JROTC teams in the world championships. This year, all of the Delmarva region teams competing at the Worlds came from the same community. Congratulations to Brandywine Box Middle School Team 9039J for receiving the sportsmanship for their division. No intro needed on this story. Let's just roll tape. love the fact that the next story, if you go to that slide previously, the next story to be read to that puppy is a Pete the Cat book. You gotta love it. <laughs> Brandy Wayne School District continues to find additional ways to support our students, family, and community. Currently, students, families, and staff are being introduced to Help Me, which is an app. Our access to Help Me comes through a collaboration between the State of Delaware and the Delaware Emergency Management Agency. Help Me includes web-based and mobile access to local, state, and national resources for finding food, housing, crisis counselors, and more. It also includes resources for coping with anxiety and depression. Additionally, with Help Me, individuals can contact the 24-7 Crisis Text Line. At the start of the 23-24 school year, a third feature will be available that allows students, parents, and community members to seek help directly from their school. Help Me will allow for anonymous inquiries and reporting. School personnel will be able to communicate with those who submit an inquiry directly through the application. We look forward to presenting this feature as an additional tool to stay connected and provide support to our students. Throughout the remainder of the school year and in the summer months, we hope that Help Me will be a valuable tool to seek resources and assess, access the crisis line through text. The Help Me application can be downloaded in the App Store or in Google Play. Alternatively, individuals can connect at web.com help me resources 
facebook.com backslash login and search for the Brandywine School District. Those directions will be included in the board recap that gets mailed out to parents within the next week. If the spring harvest is a sign of what's to come, farmers and consumers around the Tri-State area are in for a treat with this year's crops. Local Lane Science students are reaping the bounties of the seeds planted months ago. Students study the germination cycle and put their learned knowledge about growing things into practice. Students in Mr. Glazier's seventh grade social studies classes at Springer Middle School is also, also proven to be quite proficient in growing things too. Stock, stock portfolios, and stock options. Once again, Springer students excelled in the University of Delaware Center for Economic Education and Entrepreneurial Stock Market Competition, an online simulation of the global capital markets that engages students in grades four to 12 in the world of economics, investing, and personal finance, and prepares them for financial independent futures. Springer had three teams place in the state competition. Coming in fourth place was team Peyton Connie, Mave Erickson, Elena Michaelwitz, and Lauren Feldman. Coming in second place was the team of Efton Tay Ramsey and Mohammed Abbas. Coming in first place out of a total of 133 teams was the team of Kiera Lazar Messenger, Abigail Umbrecht, and Alyssa Umbrecht. This team was able to outperform the S&P 500 by 17.2%. This team will be recognized at the award ceremony of the University of Delaware. Congratulations to all the participants. And we'll end this evening's superintendent's report with our May sizzle video. Good morning, Mount Pleasant Dragons. Mr. Auerbach here with your morning announcements coming at you live. Our adaptive playground ensures that kids with and without disabilities have access to play on playground equipment. Or one super strong one, right? Yeah, so what could we say about his performance? So maybe that would be something in the way he speaks. His dad was from it. So we're going to take turns through paragraph. Engineering students have done an amazing job of, of visualizing how to make things that really help people with disabilities create art and express themselves. Superintendent Holler, any comments or questions from the board? My only question is, how do we get invited to the puppy breeding <laughs> seminar? <laughs> I just say that even even an old curmudgeon like me, that uh, video touched on the old heartstrings. I, I know we covered a lot of time tonight on you know a lot of the recognition for students and teachers and, and events and and it's something about tonight just strikes different with me and. I sit here and all of us on the board, you know, care a lot about public education in the Brandywine School District. Otherwise, we wouldn't sit up here. Um, but tonight, I'm really super proud to be a product of this district, to send my kids to this district, 
And like any organization, we're not without our faults or challenges. And I know that you know, we're all continuing to strive to do better and be better. But just, I don't know how you can't look at the students that were recognized, their poise and the achievements and the things that they're accomplishing and can't, you know, you've got to recognize the value of public education, specifically Brandywine School District. And I'm just super proud of this district and the people that run it and the teachers and the all, all levels that, you know, do our daily operations and, you know, make the wheels turn. So I just want to say thank you for everyone in this district that does what they do. Thank you to the students for their engagement and their thoughtfulness and their giving back to the community and the parents and families and friends that support them. So well done. And we do not have any public comment this evening. We'll take us into our board business and liaison reports, starting with Mr. Ackerman, BSBA Executive Board. The Delaware School Board Association met uh, last week. I did today email a copy of the minutes uh, to all board members uh, with a copy to the superintendent. So you have it. Um, I, I think I'll let uh, Ms. Gordon kind of cover what was one of the major topics because it was a very, a very, well, it was happening right then. It was kind of a current event. Uh, but I will say that the executive, uh, the officers of DSBA have all agreed to continue. So I'm going to continue in my role as president and we expect uh, our other officers are also committed to continue in their roles. Uh, we have one person who's facing an opponent in the election, uh, but we feel confident that he'll be in. If he doesn't, then we'll open up that slot again for nomination. Thank you, Mr. Ackerman, and congratulations. Uh, Ms. Gordon, DSBA Legislative Committee. Yes. The DSBA Legislative Committee met April 26th. After I received minutes of the meeting from Dr. Marinucci, the report was sent to the members of the board and to Dr. Lawson. The Legislative Committee initially reviewed 12 House bills and had supportive positions of all but three of those. The bill that received strong opposition was the House Bill 96. This act reduces school board elections from 18 year olds to 16 year olds. All other public school elections, which includes referendums, the minimum voting age remains 18 years old. We did receive notice from Dr. Marinucci on April 29 that this House bill was tabled by the committee and that a committee hearing would take place within 12 legislative days. There was also opposition to House Bills 3 and 127. Only three Senate bills were reviewed. Only one was opposed. That was Senate Bill 61. Our next legislative meeting is scheduled for May 31st. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. And, and Dr. Marinucci did make an effort to contact board members throughout the state in regards to that voting age bill. And, and my comments back to the representative who posed it as well as the education committee was it, it's not gonna help us pass a referendum to lower the age of, of school board elections voting eligibility to 16. In fact, it, it, may, it may cause other citizens in our community feel like their votes are being diluted because certainly you have a captive audience in the school building. So could you keep the elections in the school buildings or would you have to move them to someplace else? There's just a whole plethora of issues that you open with that, with that door. Um, and the other thing is, is, is the idea that, you know, citizens might not be inclined to vote for referendums in that case. And I also expressed to the legislators that I wrote to that it really feels like the legislature does not appreciate school board service. It, it just comes off that way, you know, with the lowering of the terms, uh, other things that have come along down the pike, mandating of curriculum, uh, loss of local control. It, it just doesn't feel, I don't know how y'all feel, I've been you know, up here for a long time, but it just doesn't feel like the legislature appreciates what we do and the time that we volunteer and the service that we provide. And I would just hope that they would, you know, kind of take a look at the, the people who are running. And, and it's been very consistent, even though the terms have changed to four years, um, there, it's still about the same number of people running for seats. It hasn't really changed the number of people running. It certainly hasn't enticed more people to run with a, with a lower term. So I, I would just, you know, like to say to the legislature, hey, have a little consideration for us and, and maybe value our service a little more than you do. Understood. Can I um, 
what do you what makes her go from getting like this face individual from so we go through a lot of trouble to convince the public that they should vote for referendum mm -hmm. and i think that if the public felt that students were putting board members on the board they would be less inclined to vote for a referendum plus it's real simple the age of majority is 18. except we now set the precedent with the wilmington learning collaborative where we have at least one we have three students who sit on the board but there is one voting student if it were up to us we would have three voting students and so um, if you watch any of our meetings, those students are actually engaged and um, surprisingly very impressive and aware of the content of what we discuss. And so I think um, having students at the table, especially who are making decision about, decisions about them, um, has proven to the WLC board to be more fruitful and beneficial to them. Madam Chair, is that the bell was pulled up proceed so i was at, uh questioning or asking um i like to call you dr Ackerman. um <laughs> thank you for <laughs> <laughs> um to explain why um a student presence would deter someone from voting in favor of a referendum not necessarily again it's not the, the idea is not to put students on board the idea is to let 16 and 17 year olds vote in school board elections that's the proposal I understand that. Um, and I just Wouldn't think that it's um, the earlier we can engage any voter, the better. Um, and of course, we want informed, informed voters. But um, I think we wait too late to engage young people in the voting process, which is which which plays out in um, not just school board elections, but elections as a whole at times. That's my two cents. My two cents. Great. Thank you, both of you. Um, District Finance Committee met on May 3rd, uh, a little earlier in advance of this early meeting. Um, discussed the monthly financial report, financial position report, and the tax abatement request that uh, Ms. Flory will present later on. Our next meeting will also be early, June 8th, uh, in order to uh, meet the early June meeting. And I know we got a couple more uh, board liaison reports, but I know we have uh, a last minute public comment, which I'll allow after we finish our uh, our board reports. Um, health and wellness, Mr. Heller. Yeah, the uh, health and wellness leadership team held a planning meeting on May 4th, and the full committee will meet on May 18th. Maintenance Advisory Committee, Chairman. Yeah, so uh, the Maintenance Advisory Committee met May 2nd at site. The bulk of the meeting was discussing district capital needs as we begin determining what the fiscal side of a next referendum might look like. The majority of the capital needs that we discussed were around Mount Pleasant High School, as well as the Mount Pleasant Elementary School, which both had not seen renovation for quite a while. There was also a long discussion on how to accommodate. Uh, we've talked about the site several times tonight how to accommodate the ever-growing needs of the site program um, and able it to grow and move forward to give those students even better career opportunities to prepare them for their future. Great, thank you, Mr. Hill. Uh, Ms. Pigeon, parents, council, students with disabilities. The last meeting was held on May 4th. That's the last meeting for this year. Um, there were presentations from the Division of Vocational Rehab on transition and the University of Delaware Spe Spectrum Scholars Program and the pilot program at the University of Delaware. Um, if anyone, uh, I believe Dr. Uh, Warner sent out the presentations to all of the email addresses that she has um, for review for anyone that couldn't attend. Um, if anyone is interested in serving on their school as their school's representative for next year, they can reach out to the school principal for nominations um, that are going to start at the beginning of next year. And there was not another meeting this year. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pigeon. Uh, Wilmington Learning Collaborative update, Reverend Perry. Yes. Um, the Wilmington Learning Collaborative met last Thursday, May the 4th. 
Um, our priorities continue to be creating communication networks and an infrastructure to ensure that we're able to disseminate uh, uh, information to our respective districts and constituencies. We are also in the process of securing a CTA. Uh, we have received the first installment of funding to, um, to, um, to cover our initial expenses. Uh, we've also um, are in the process of creating a mentoring framework for our student reps. We understand the importance of, again, engaging them as I previously stated, but also ensuring that they are prepared for our meetings and they understand the content, content and what is discussed. Um, Christina School District um, is responsible for identifying a new student rep. As you all may or may not be aware, their student rep is our voting rep who is a senior and will be graduating. Um, we received the first draft of our council bylaws on our council. The WLC board did have an initial read on May 4th and um, the committee will be entertaining um, the, the adjustments to our council bylaws. Um, our main priority at this time has been hiring our executive director. As previously stated, we had more than 100 candidates express interest in the position. 17 persons automatically progressed to the second phase of our hiring process and another 17 received additional training. Um, of the 34, 11 candidates were recommended to the WLC board to move forward. Uh, those 11 candidates received written exercise today, Monday, the May the 8th, and have until the end of business uh, on Wednesday, May the 10th, to submit the exercise to our empowerment team, uh, our project manager. The empowerment team will then screen the exercises and recommend those candidates who will move on to the face-to-face -face interview phase. We are currently discussing a recommended date to host a community forum to introduce the finalists to the community. Details and a mutually beneficial format for the forum are currently also being discussed. Details will be shared broadly once finalized. Since this last, since this board is met last, um, I've had several meetings with, uh, I've had several meetings to include uh, one with uh, Secretary Holliday regarding additional supports, uh, Governor Carney, and made one presentation to the Extended Learning Opportunities Subcommittee of the Department of Education. Our next meeting will be held next Thursday, May the 18th at 6 p.m. at Delaware State University in Bridgeport. That concludes my report. Thank you, Reverend Perry. Uh, 917 WMPH Advisory Committee does not, has not had a meeting, um, but I did just get an email a few days ago uh, regarding some WMPH students. Um, we had the MPA awards, I think were mentioned last month. We had three students won first place that automatically enters them into the national competition. And that looks like that was Brendan Smith, Gemma Calabria, and Farana Khan. So um, we should have the results in a week or two for the national competition. And hopefully we can bring them in in June for uh, their recognition. Uh, no meeting set for the um, summer meeting at this point. Any additional board member reports? Uh, yes, Mr. Strobot, I would like to just give a report on the uh, district committee for um, educator recruitment and retention, if I may. Please do. Um, before I do that, I just want to say that um, Gemma actually interviewed me for the um, radio special where I shared six songs and then she shared six songs and then she certainly, um, I know that everyone does a good, great job over at the radio station, so congratulations to everybody. Um, the um, district uh, educator recruitment and retention meeting uh, committee met on April 27th. It was led by our HR director, Delithia McIntyre. Um, we began the meeting with a thought provoking question as kind of a way to get to know each other. And the question was, um, in what ways have you been supported this year? Um, which I thought was a really wonderful way to start off really positively um, and to think about 
um, ways that, um, that our educators could continue to be supported. Um, then um, after giving Nina a debrief, uh, just to get some of our um, new members uh, who are current 2023 building teachers of the year, um, and then we will invite future 2024 building teachers of the year to join us uh, next year. Uh, so we really are excited about having representation from each of the buildings um, in the future. Um, Ms. McIntyre has encouraged the, the teachers to bring um, other representatives uh, with them uh, to future meetings uh, just to really make sure that we're diversifying um, and, and really uh, being thorough in, in seeking feedback. Um, so at this past meeting, we uh, got us everybody up to speed and then we did a little bit of some focused uh, teacher feedback and, um, and we got some really interesting um, ideas and a lot of um, really great ideas. Um, and we're still in the idea seeking phase as we will continue meeting uh, next year, I believe monthly, yes, monthly. Um, and um, just staying uh, solution focused, but yet still honoring uh, concern. Thank you, Ms. Stock. Mm -hmm. um, can I, I have a question for Reverend Perry, if I may. Um, I read, I think it was maybe Delaware Live today, um, I was reading an article about the WLC and the timeline. And uh, uh, just a question that came up from that article, in your opinion, I guess, do you think the size of the WLC board is slowing down the progress? One of the concepts of the WLC that we talked about was kind of streamlining things and eliminating red tape and the WLC board has grown to be larger than any school board in the state. So I was wondering if you think that the number, the sheer number of people having an opinion is slowing down progress, and if you think that'll change drastically once there's an executive director. Um, I would say absolutely not. Um, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that is taking place, and I can't imagine that falling on five or six people. And so the fact that we do have a relatively larger board absolutely works to our benefit. Um, the board members meet, um, as a collective body, we meet twice a month, so every other week. Um, and then in between those meetings, we actually have several subcommittee meetings as well. So um, I can't imagine all of the work falling on a board this size and scope. Um, and do, your second question was, do I anticipate that? Um, I actually, think that we, considering the magnitude of the work that we've had to do, um, I think that we are making a lot of progress. And once we hire an executive director, we absolutely intend and expect to move a little quicker. But um, just the administrative um, tasks that we've had to, to do and to, um, and then as we're working, dealing with the challenges that come up naturally and organically, um, I think the size of our board absolutely works to our benefit more than it does hinder our benefit. And I have to say, I hope you get the, the support that is needed. I was surprised to read that the, uh, that the support from the state wasn't as much as needed. So hopefully you get that. It sounds like it's definitely warranted. So those um, out of the meeting with um, Secretary Hollidick and um, Governor Carney, they absolutely, um, and I should have, I apologize to both of them, I, sh I should have reported as such, um, they absolutely did um, offer to lend um, additional support, specifically from um, the Biden Institute. Um, and so we are, that is not, um, I, I also failed to mention that um, I had uh, a family emergency last week, so I wasn't able to attend the last meeting. Um, and so I wasn't able to show that broadly, but that is um, Dr. Holliday specifically, in addition to Governor Carney's offer of additional support. Fantastic. Thank you. So as I mentioned earlier, if it pleases the board, I'd like to reopen uh, public comment. Uh, we have some speakers that uh, would like to make comments. Um, this is the time. We ask our speakers and audience members be courteous and respectful to each other. This is the time to be heard regarding topics related to the Brandon Island School District. Um, since I don't have comment cards for you, if you could please make sure you fill one on the way out and just make sure you clearly introduce your name. Uh, once you begin speaking, you'll have a few minutes to 
Hi, I'm Joe Consiglio, Concord High School English teacher. I'm Bailey Fields, and I'm a freshman at Concord. Hi, I'm Elliot Rosario. I'm a junior at Concord, and we're here to represent Concord's Gay Straight Alliance and are here to ask you to please stop the practice of segregating students by gender at graduation. Graduation gowns should be one color, and students should line up alphabetically. Currently, students are forced to either wear white or maroon gown at graduation. In effect, students are forced to publicly identify their gender. Jostin's website, which is the website that provides the gowns, lists the gowns that are white as female and the maroons as male. So what choice should those who are transgender or gender non-conforming, what gowns should they wear? The conflict is real and the harms are real. Suppose a student is out to their parents but not to their grandparents. That student must choose a gown that will either conceal their gender identity or out them to grandma. Suppose a student chooses a color and their parents say no. Every year, students fear the conversation that they must have at home, and Concord staff end up in the middle of family fights. And when students are courageous enough to wear the color of their choosing, and they receive full support from their parents, they are often bullied by their classmates. Last year at graduation, a Concord student needed an escort to his car. This is not a personal or a school-level problem. This is a societal problem. The bullying and marginalizing of transgender people is a national shame. And it's not just a gay thing. It's a matter of public justice. Consider this. What if we segregated students not by gender, but by height, or eye color, or race? Imagine if Jostens asked you to identify your religion and then chose your graduation robe. The solution is simple and obvious. One, order one color gown and have students line up alphabetically for graduation. This costs nothing, this requires no sacrifice. It's so easy, schools around the nation have already made the move without incident. We know you know this. We first approached you about it five years ago. We have corresponded with each of you individually. We have met many with, of you personally about this. And yet, despite assurances that we have been heard, we have not been given an answer. It's as if you hope the problem will solve itself or perhaps that these students, if ignored long enough, will just go away. I'm afraid we're at time. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for your comments. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, do I have a motion to accept I'm going, to, I'm going to do item 8A and then item 8B. Uh, motion to accept the monthly personnel report as discussed in executive session. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to accept employee uh, matter, the attendance recommendation for employee matter 23-104 as discussed in executive session? So moved. moved. Second. second. <laughs> we'll give it to Mr. Ackerman on the motion, Mr. Heller on the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Items 9A, B, and C. Do I have a motion to accept student matters uh, A, B, and C as discussed in executive session? So moved. Second. second. Motion stock second, Reverend Perry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, old business. We have a draft of board meeting dates and times for 2023 to 2024. Mr. Holler. Just very quick, only two changes to that document that was presented last meeting. Um, I think it was Ms. Pigeon who asked that we go back and look, make sure we weren't having a board meeting following extended week off for students. Uh, we did find that to be the case in November, corrected that date. And then we also have corrected the date of the July meeting. Last time it was listed as July 10th, this time listed as July 17th. Uh, that is more in line with our current uh, scheduling of board meetings. Uh, we will need to call a special meeting where We'll ask our CFO, Ms. Flores, to um, share the preliminary budget for the school year next year, as well as uh, her recommendation or 
recommendations to the board for tax warrant. And that'll need to be done uh, prior to the 13th of June on which it's due to the county. Do I have a motion to accept the board meeting dates and times as presented? Motion. Second. Uh, Mr. Heller on the motion, Ms. Stock on the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Leads us on to new business. Ms. McIntyre? Um, yeah, contract extension. Brainwide School District Board of Education and the Brainwide School District Nutrition Association, BSEA slash NEA. This evening, we are before you regarding the approval of a contract extension. The contract extension is between the Brandywine School District Board of Education and the Brandywine School Nutrition Association. The current contract will expire on June 30th of this year, 2023. I would like to give special thanks to the Brandywine School District Nutrition representatives, uh, Lillian Poole, Lead General Worker, and Loretta Truono, General Worker, along with Mr. David Davis, DSCA rep and rep for the union, along with the Brandywine School District School Nutrition Department, Supervisor Colleen Carter, Sheila Quickle, the Senior Operations Specialist, Corey Knopf, Acting Associate Operations Specialist, Kelly Marbain, Field Manager, CFO Jill Flore, and uh, myself participated in these dialogues. The parties came to a tentative agreement on the one-year extension to the current contract with agreed upon language and salary provisions on May the 2nd, of 2023. The current contract ends on June 30th of this year and the language and salary items that are part of the negotiated agreement with the revisions are the basis for this one year contract extension from July the 1st, 2023 through June 30th of 2024. The tentative agreements, if approved, will affect the working conditions and local salary provisions of the extended contract agreement between the parties for the next year. It is the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the one-year extension of the contract with the new provisions of the agreement between the Brandywine School District Board of Education and the Brandywine Nutrition Association. Do I have a motion to accept the contract extension as presented? So moved. Second. I have a motion, Mr. Ackerman, second, Ms. Gordon. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Next up, Ms. Flore with the monthly financial report, position report, and tax abatement request. Good evening, members of the board, superintendent, those in person and online. I'm starting to embrace being the last presenter every month. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I'm thinking of that little puppy that's just crawling in the bed after just a long day, ready to um, snooze with one last story. Um, but it's a good story. And because um, oftentimes finances put people to sleep, I know. But these are good. Um, on the revenue side, we're 99.3% of local revenues received. We're inching our way to the June 30th balance, um, or I'm sorry, the June 30th fiscal closing. Um, and so 99.3, um, we just are expecting um, the last taxes as well as the, um, the state senior property tax rebate. On the state side, state discretionary, we're 98.8% received. Um, and for categorical state, 84.7, with the largest being state division one salaries that they will um, fund fully by June 30th. On the expense side, um, you'd expect to be at this point of the year at 83.3%. That's just 10 of 12 months. Um, and we're below that at 78.71. Um, there's one area of the budget, I spoke to this last month, um, that is over budget. Um, and that is energy. Um, there's nothing that will change that going into June. That's an encumbrance. And so I don't anticipate that that number is going to grow significantly. Um, and the finance committee is going to look, look at that in detail 
um, in the next month, but it is based on our expenses in um, both, ga both gas and electric. Um, the other item in yellow on the report is the, um, that is showing over budget. This one, there is a reflection of, of revenues that's not uh, in there as well. And so nutrition is showing as over budget, but there are also additional revenues, both from the, um, the Titan portal, as well as the federal reimbursement. So where you would see a budget negative look concerning, obviously when you don't have the additional revenue to account for it, it, it would be, um, but on the nutrition one, um, we will, um, we're working on that to kind of present a more realistic revenue and expense picture for um, preparing the next year's budget. The, um, the report includes where we are on um, ESSER expenditures, obviously winding down ESSER 2 and moving um, into ESSER 3. Um, and the last uh, part of the report, it almost mirrors exactly what we do on the financial position report. And that is, what is our projected ending balance for June 30th? And this is where the puppy is starting to close its eyes because it's exactly where um, we said it was going to be as we get closer and closer to June 30th. Um, 8.58 is what the cash flow said. Um, and that was an April 30th projection, whereas the financial position report, it's virtually the same thing. It's projecting wh what our cash position will be coming into June 30th, but that one was done as of March 31st. So they're not identical, slightly different, only because of the um, when the projection was done, but still 8.588 um, million, which is sufficient to start the next year. And then, as we said, part of those conversations that we'll have in July are what is the next, um, uh, next month's finance committee will go over the, the three-year forecast um, and then what are the projections for the next year. So I did kind of, I know it's two separate votes, but I did kind of roll the two in together because they were the same presentation or the same information. So quick question on the financial position report. In the past, it's only been a one pager. It, it appears to have grown to a two pager. Did the state change the formatting or did you just enhance it? I did not. The the It's uh, a spreadsheet and the one page is a summary and the other page is the detail that feeds the summary. So it, it kind of breaks down all the lines that go into that one page summary. Yeah, I think in the past all we've seen is a summary page. Okay. I mean, it's, I'm happy to see the detail. Yeah, it's really, it's how, how it feeds that, um, but it's all in, it's data that's um, entered in Excel. Any other questions? We have a motion to accept the financial report for April 30th, subject to audit. So moved. Second. Thank you, Jim Stock. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Financial position report. Oh, sorry. Thank you since I called the other one. Do I have a motion for the financial position report as subject to audit? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Ackerman, Ms. Stock. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And tax abatement request. Um, we have another tax abatement request um, this month. This one is from Red Clay. It's for the Hocus and Historical Society. Um, they acquired part of ownership of property that was transferred. Um, in the process of transferring it, the tax exempt status was dropped. Um, and so the county uh, passed resolution to um, correct that. Red Clay's board has voted to um, abate those taxes which they weren't paid, so it's not a refund, it's just it will never be collected. Um, and our part of the tax pool would be $1,190.74, um, but it is tax exempt property and should not have been charged. Move to accept the tax abatement request. Second. We have a motion, Mr. Ackerman, second Mr. Heller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. General information and meeting dates. Uh, next 
This is a board workshop scheduled for May 22nd, Mount Pleasant Elementary, multi-purpose room, followed by our regular board meetings on June 12th and July 17th. Last comments or questions from the board? I know I know, Mr. Scarbot doesn't want to hear this from me, but I do want to make a comment regarding our public comment. And I would just like to ask, because this has been an issue for many years, as um, Mr. Consiglio had stated, he also had emailed us as a board back in January. Um, so I'd like to ask that we could either add this topic of graduation colors to a board agenda, a board workshop. I, I don't want us to have a discussion necessarily tonight due to the hour, and um, but I, I do think it's worthy of a board discussion because I think we all have different opinions about um, about this issue, and I think it's something that we should have a discussion about. Is this not a school issue? I mean, why is the board getting involved with this? Shouldn't Concord decide what Concord wants to do? So I completely agree with you, Mr. Ackerman, but I think that that's why we should have the discussion. So are we, are we looking to pressure Concord into making some kind of a decision or a move? I mean, I haven't heard anything from Brandywine or Mount. Not as, I mean, you know, my own daughter is gender nonconforming. She wore the white gown. She didn't have any problem with it, I, you know. I, I get the concern. I, it just seems like something that should be handled at the school level, not the board level. I don't want to be telling the schools how to pick the colors for their graduation. It just it just doesn't feel right. It, it, it should come from the school. Well, I know each each high school has had some creative liberty in the past in how they design their ceremony. Um, this year, what I'm hearing is that we you know will see some more consistency between the three high schools with alphabetical lineups. So hopefully that will you know, alleviate some of the concerns of the students presenting here tonight. Um, but if Ms. Pigeon wants to you know, put this on a board or workshop agenda in the future, we can certainly do that. Well, I would definitely second that, um, what, what Ms. Pigeon is, is requesting. Um, in um, last, I think it was last spring, um, Mr. Scarabot, Reverend Scarabot himself, we did meet with Mr. Consiglio and a couple of the students. This was post-graduation, so I think it was actually early summer. Um, and I think that I, I, I just continue to go back to, and I, I, I would like some time to seek um, what what are best practices um, in this in this area. And um, I think that we do need to spend some time because um, it has been an issue for five years, um, and I would definitely like to give it the attention it deserves that the students deserve. Okay, we'll look for it on a future agenda. Any last minute, anything else, anyone? With that, I thank everyone for their time and attention and participation this evening. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. This concludes our May meeting.